Hey guys, Kevin kind of with the season of Togetherness now over as season two just ended. I figured that I will now review the entire season of season two of Togetherness. And of course, it's also the end of the show because surprisingly season two was the end. And I will review pretty much um, how I felt about the entire show and the season overall. But let's just get into the season because I was really looking forward to it. But it was a while since I watched the first season and I was forgetting what happened. But I was really looking forward to revisiting the show because I remembered how great the first season really was and um season two I was really looking forward to seeing how things would be and season two was not I'd say extremely different from season one but it was a different kind of show because the show was anything but togetherness I mean they were divided a lot there were a lot of things going on there the characters kind of went on their own and I do think that there were some things in Season 2 that top Season 1. I think it was just as strong as Season 1. I'm not going to say it was better than Season 1. I think it was just as strong. Overall, I really did enjoy the season. There's a lot to get into. There's a, a lot that I really love that they did this season. Um... That I really do want to get into and like I said I'm not just going to talk about this season I'll talk about the show overall when we get to the end of this review but basically let's just get into it because we mainly have two plots going on this season the first plot um has to do with we see um Alex is now in this very successful movie in New Orleans as we know because he took that job and we see that he's kind of changed fundamentally he's a lot more confident about himself he's a lot more um he's acting more like a celebrity but he still is a good guy but he has his girlfriend now and he just you can tell feels a lot more confident and you know basically Tina doesn't really know where it's come from you can tell and definitely I love the way that that was done the way that the beginning the way they reintroduced us to the show where they all visit him on his birthday that was a very good way to start it I definitely really did enjoy that and uh basically Tina can tell that there's just something not right with Alex. She can definitely tell what's going on there, and uh, you can definitely tell that Alex, um, you know, like I said, has fundamentally changed, definitely, in a good way, but he's not really attracted to Tina anymore. He doesn't seem to really like her in the same way, and she really doesn't understand what happened. She wants to obviously know what happened, and she doesn't know what happened. So, obviously, she's trying to figure out what's going on there, and eventually, at the end of the episode, he does end up confronting her in this incredible scene where he basically tells her um that you know he did like her but she completely rejected him and the time that they had they can't be together now because she completely rejected him there's nothing that she can do about it. there's nothing she can say to take it back they had something and she completely ignored him he liked her and she didn't really do anything about it and basically he broke her heart and there's really nothing she can do and you can tell that Tina is starting to take an interest in Alex but they've both moved on he has a girlfriend she has a boyfriend as we know Larry and because of that you know they really do need to move on and you can can tell that Tina doesn't really want to, but Alex kind of does, and I love the way that scene was done, and that was some of the best moments of the season, are the really deep character moments where we see a lot of the consequences for what happened this season. A lot of the season is about consequence, and how a lot of what these characters did is having a big impact on them, but it was done in a very realistic way, because you can tell that Tina, it's not that she's starting to get feelings for Alex, it's that she doesn't understand why Alex is suddenly not interested in her, because look how Alex was last season. I mean, we remember he had this huge crush on Tina, he really wanted to be with her, and now he's acting very different, but it's basically because Tina pushed him away, and he basically figured that she didn't want to be with him, and basically said, look, you kind of broke my heart, I don't want anything to do with you, and things are really awkward between them for the rest of the season, you can definitely tell. I mean, it gets a little bit um, not as awkward as it goes on, but right now, I mean, things don't really go well because T ends up showing up to a party, and Alex arrives late with his girlfriend, Christy, and at the party, they basically continually uh, use passive-aggressive behavior towards each other, annoying Alex, and... Basically, you know, things get really crazy there, and uh, let's get into the main stuff, though, because I really briefly wanted to get into that. We'll get more into a Alex and Tina when we get into it, because eventually these plots become one, and we'll get into really what happens there. But of course, we need to talk about Brett and Michelle, because the big question going out of season one was, did Michelle actually have sex with David and... From the very first moments, we can tell that she did, and it was real, but she already regrets it, and I love seeing that. I love that Michelle does regret it. I love that she doesn't know why she did it, and she wants to hide it from Brett at all costs, and Tina's saying that she has to hide it from him, and, you know, basically, 
Uh, she has to try to, you know, not to tell Brett about it because he's going to freak out and everything. And plus, he's in a good mood. She doesn't want him to tell, you know, she doesn't want her to tell him. But you can definitely tell that that's not going to last long. And I like that we did realize that Michelle did this. Again, Michelle has flaws. But at the end of the day, she does love Brett. And she didn't mean to cheat on him. Basically, you know, her and Alex, her and David just got close. They end up having sex. And there's really nothing she could have done about it. I mean, she's now done what she has done. And there's really, she can't take it back, unfortunately, even though she wants to, she can't really take it back, and unfortunately, in episode two, it does eventually come out that they do, that she did, in fact, have sex with David, and you can tell that this really changes Brett, he doesn't really know how to handle all this, but I love the way the scene was done, because in episode two, basically, they're just casually talking, um, but, you know, Brett can tell that Michelle is off. Michelle definitely is hiding something. He can tell right away that there's just something off about her. He doesn't know what it is, but he knows that she definitely is hiding something. And basically, you know, she comes out and says, hey, I had sex with David. And Brett can just tell that that's, it makes perfect sense. That's why she's been saying all this stuff. That's why she's been hiding all this from him. And now it makes perfect sense as to why he, she is acting the way she is. So he's not surprised. And it's a kind of a hard scene to watch. You can see she really doesn't want to do that. In that same episode, she basically tells David, David that she doesn't really want to move forward and that what they did was a mistake and for the rest of the season we don't see her go back with David because Michelle really regrets being with David and basically this really changed the bonding between Brett and Michelle. Now we already knew that Brett and Michelle were at a crossroads. We already knew their relationship was on the rocks. We already knew that things were getting really bad between these two and that they weren't really lasting that long. I mean we knew ever since episode 6 of last season that these two were really starting to not connect as much and they really were starting to lose that dynamic. You know at first was a silly thing, but this season we really get more into that because that just makes them more and more distant and it basically causes uh, Brett to move out and for Michelle to stay. And we get this really great dynamic in Episode 3, which by far is my favorite episode of the season. I love the way Episode 3 was done. I definitely really love that. But back to Tina and Alex real quick in Episode 2. They do have this conversation about um, how Tina said that she made him skinny and that she lost his soul, commenting about his new Hollywood behavior. And Alexson calls her life a train wreck and that she acts like it's this great thing when it's really not. And yeah, Tina's life isn't that great. I mean, Tina acts like her life is, you know, a lot, you know, like she is a lot, she's gone a lot straighter than Alex, but her life is really just as fucked up. And the way that they're kind of not really bonding, but she's not really understanding that, I definitely really do like. And Tina kind of gets her own thing this season, which I'll get into. But then episode three is mainly where most of this season takes place, which episode three, without a doubt, is not only my favorite episode of this season, but my favorite episode of Togetherness in general, because it really just takes us back to the roots of where the show started. I mean, how do we start off with the show? Brett and Alex are best friends, Michelle and Tina are are sisters, and that's exactly what you see in this episode. This is probably the closest we've seen Brett and Alex in a while. I mean, the closest we've seen them was probably episode three of last season. If you guys remember that great scene where they were in the car and they just started air drumming to a song. I mean, we all remember that great scene. That was basically this that episode, but an entire episode of that, and I really loved everything this episode did because there was obviously a lot of catharsis to deal with. I mean, basically, you know, Brett's really hurt by Michelle, and he's going through a lot of different stages, like the way that he was sad and then angry. I mean, it really felt realistic the way they handled it. You could really tell that this really affected Brett in a way he didn't really expect it to. Obviously he knew Michelle, you know, cheating was a bad thing, but he never really expected this to hurt to break him the way it did. And Alex doesn't really know what to do about it. He really wants to help him, but he really doesn't know how to handle this all situation, and basically they decide to go to this bar in 1980s clothing, they run to Kennedy, which is this girl that he once knew, and she invites him to a house party, and basically at the party, basically they end up flirting, and she later takes him cycling, and when they return, they go into the bathroom, they make out, but Brett tells her that he's married and runs off, he does not want to cheat on her, even though he knows that Michelle did, he doesn't want to do the same thing, because a double standard, I mean, that's never right to do, he doesn't want to do that, and then we get this great scene between these two, where Brett does tell Alex that he was angry that he never returned his calls when he was with New Orleans because basically we realize that Alex hasn't talked to any of them and that obviously has been a problem. They introduced this very early in the season but it really isn't as much of a problem till episode three and I like the way that was done because you know, fundamentally, I mean, you could tell that Brett really was just trying to be happy for Alex but unfortunately, um, 
because of that, because of him being happy for, because of him being happy for Alex, he really deep down was upset that Alex wasn't taking his calls. He knew obviously Alex had a life without him, but he kind of moved on without him. And you can tell that this really is their moment to get that dynamic back, that friend dynamic, get back to being best friends. And you really do see that here. They dig up this time capsule they buried in Brett's, in Brett's backyard in Detroit, and they start digging and wake up Brett's father. And Brett lies that Alex is having trouble, and that's why they're in Detroit. And it's a really nice scene. I love the way this was done. They read this note from like their former selves and uh basically you know um they're reading this note from their younger selves and everything you can really tell that they're bonding very well and i like that alex did get mad at brett here i mean he had every reason to get mad at him i love the way that was done but then basically while this is going on we see michelle and tina basically tina decides to watch the kids and this is one of my favorite parts of the season without a doubt i loved seeing tina kind of play a second mother to stace to uh sophie i love the way this was done i love her dynamic with the kids because you can tell that she doesn't really know what she's doing but she really loves these kids and as much as they annoy her she does actually really appreciate them she does really enjoy this and this kind of gets her to possibly consider having kids with Larry and Larry asks her do you really want kids and you can tell that he really doesn't want to and you know she has this whole thing where is it really a problem if we do because yeah that is a genuine situation where if they don't have you know where they should have kids, but you don't really know if she wants them to, and it's very interesting the way that happens. Apparently, we find out she can't have kids because she has some sort of, like, rare disease where, like, her eggs doesn't produce properly. I don't really know what it's called, but, um... Basically, you know, it doesn't produce properly. I don't really know. Um, definitely very interesting the way that that was done. But back to the dynamic with Michelle and Tina. I love the way this was done because you really saw that sister dynamic and you really saw Tina being there for Michelle. Not that they didn't have interaction before, but this really gives them a lot more room for interaction. And I definitely really love that because we've seen a lot of Brett and Alex, but not a whole lot of Michelle and Tina. And this episode, this season was clearly trying to show those two dynamics. That's what togetherness really is. I mean, look at this poster for this season. You have Brett and Alex together, you know, basically hugging, and Tina and Michelle are kind of just squeezing in because they're kind of just part of this, when in reality, you know, Brett and Alex is the true dynamic of this show, and Tina and Michelle are kind of just, uh, side, you know, the side part of that, but they do have their own thing, and I definitely did really like the way that was done. Like I said, I love seeing Tina play second mother to Michelle. Michelle, meanwhile, is trying to get involved with this school, basically, because what ends up happening is that she hears about this charter school and she basically wants to create her own school because she doesn't want her kids to have to go to private school. She doesn't want anyone to have to go to private school and starts clashing with this girl Anne, based Anna basically, and Anna at first offers her help with the project, but she ends up going way too far. She has all these ideas that Michelle doesn't have, and I like this storyline overall. The only thing is, I didn't love the charter school storyline. Like, I didn't really, it didn't really invest me as much as the other stuff. But mainly because Brett and Alex and Mariel are trying to do a puppet show based on Dune, that movie that uh, David Lin that movie that um uh, that, that it, it's a movie that I think that the one that David Lynch did, if I'm not yeah, the one that David Lynch did. They're basically trying to do a puppet show on that and they decide that they want to start working on that. Even though Alex was working on the movie, they want to start working on the puppet show, and that was something I also really liked the season, is the way that they actually incorporated some bits from the movie and actually made fun of it, I thought was very funny. I definitely really enjoyed that. And basically, they start working on this play called Dune, and, uh... We can see already that it's not very good. It's just not a very good play, but you can see that Brett really wants this, and you don't really know if Alex does, but they kind of just go along that they start working on this together. Uh, Brett ends up running into this girl, um named, uh, her name is Natalie, and he basically ends up driving this Uber taxi, and they end up actually getting really close, and you can tell right away that Brett and Natalie, they are starting to connect, and he doesn't necessarily want to have sex with her, but they do, in fact, end up having sex. You can tell that they do. Um, he doesn't really know what to do about Michelle, because before in that episode, Michelle had told him to come home, but he doesn't really want to, and I love the way they handle this dynamic between Brett and Michelle, because any other show, they would handle this as, you know, in a, in a situation where where, oh, Michelle doesn't love him anymore, or Michelle will never forgive him, but no, this was a good situation. Michelle and Brett still do truly care about each other. The problem is, they just are in a very awkward situation, and they can't really forgive each other for what they did. What Michelle did is very bad. It really changed how Brett feels about her, the way he trusts her, things like that, and because of that, it's going to be very hard for him to forgive her, and I think Michelle knows that she wants to come back from this, but Brett doesn't really know if that's possible for her to come back from this, and he wants her to, but I, I don't think he really thinks 
Reese knows if that's possible for her to come back from this. So I really love the way that scene was done. I thought that was a very well done scene. And there are a lot of really great scenes this season that are like that. There are many times when Brett and um when Brett and Michelle meet, basically just for him to pick up the kids or something like that, and they get into a fight. I mean, he even tells her that he never wants to hear the name uh, David. He doesn't want to hear that name. And she's kind of just trying to go on without him. But you can tell that Michelle truly does still love Brett. The problem is their dynamic is just changing so much, and he really can't forgive her for what she did, especially after the Uber taxi. Like I said, Brett starts to get close to this girl, Natalie. They do end up, in fact, having sex, and Brett moving in with Alex actually does get his girlfriend to leave because Al because his girlfriend just doesn't want Brett there, and she doesn't really she's not really comfortable with him. So that kind of ends very quickly. Um, and. Uh, Basically, like I said, Tina starts to have this thing with Larry, but Larry basically tells her that he doesn't think that she would be a good, that, you know, basically, um, you know, she, he doesn't think that she'd be a good mom, and she's obviously freaking out about it, but like I said, we find that she has a condition where she can't get pregnant, so it's not really as much of an issue as she thinks, but obviously with Larry, she did want to have kids, you can definitely tell, and that didn't really work out, um, and then basically, as the show goes on, like I said, Brett and Natalie start to get closer, and eventually, this comes to a head when Brett ends up basically, you know, like I said, having sex with Natalie, and Christy ends up leaving Alex, basically, which he's he's okay with. He's not necessarily upset that she left, because he understands. I mean, Brett comes first, and that's just kind of how it's always been. They've always been best friends, and, you know, Christy kind of represented all the bad decisions that Alex made, so he doesn't really care that she's left his life. I mean, he kind of was not a dick to Brett, but he was definitely kind of isolating himself, and Christy really hold him, held him back, and he's kind of glad that she's gone, so I like seeing that. I thought that was definitely very well done. Um, basically, we see that Alex has to work with this director that actually fired Brett, and the director leaves a set and is basically looking for drugs in Alex's trailer, and he confesses to Alex that he knows he's a jerk. Alex helps him out, and Doug Lee pulls out his copy of Doom, once seeing Alex's copy in his car, and Basically, you can tell that Brett and Alex, they want to start working on this together. This is kind of just a thing that they do together, and I definitely like the way that was done. Um, and like I said, Brett and um, Natalie start to get very, very much closer. And then as far as Tina and Michelle go, things really do start to come to a head when Anna, like I said, just starts to go too far. She starts to not want to support what Michelle's doing. She doesn't really understand why Michelle really wants this school. Because Michelle says it's something that she really wants for everyone, and something that she's wanted all her life. And... Anna's just not really taking it seriously, and this causes Michelle to freak out on her. She ends up pushing her into the pool, I believe, and, you know, like I said, Anna's just not taking it as seriously as she should be, and obviously this is really angering Michelle because of that. So you can tell that that obviously is a problem, what's going on there, but Michelle decides to go on on her own. I love the way that scene is done as well, with basically Tina trying to distract them. Um, I love the way that that whole thing was done. I thought that was really great. And then we get to episode 7, which pretty much was the Kick the Can episode of this season. If you guys remember that episode, Kick the Can, it's when all the storylines came to a head, and basically they all came together, and everyone started to bond. But this episode is very much different because there's a lot of friction going on within this episode. There's a lot of chaos going on. First of all, Brett and Alex decide to, um, you know, Brett actually ends up being kicked out of Alex's apartment, we see. Um, you know, they're both kicked out uh, because of a situation that happens, uh, basically, that they, you know, they basically are kicked out and, uh, we see after this that they decide to actually, you know, Michelle thinks that they should help her out or so that they should help out her school. This would be a good thing for their school and everything. And they don't really know if they want to do this. You know, they're kind of forced into it. But the rest of the episode, they're kind of just celebrating it. But Brett and Michelle get into this huge fight where Michelle realizes what Brett is doing. And Brett tells her that she's in all these terrible things. And this really changes. You know, you don't really know if Brett and Michelle are going to be able to come back from this. We're hoping they can, but you don't really know. And I love the way the scene was done because you don't really know what's going to happen there. They basically end up in a very bad situation while Tina and Alex really actually do start to click and they actually do seem they want to start a genuine friendship. I really love the way that scene was done. I thought that was very good and uh, you can tell that he does apologize for his behavior towards her. They agree to be friends and it seems like they're back to being friends, which I do like. I didn't like, you know, the drama between Alex and Tina, I understood it, but I like that we did get them to be friends. I thought that was very well done. I definitely really did appreciate that. So... Definitely, I really like that. Um, basically, 
Tina also uh, gets away from, uh, like I said, Larry, because Alex knows that she does want to be pregnant, she does want to be in a relationship, and the guy Dudley, you know, their director, is basically just acting drunk on the street, and he's arrested, basically, and he doesn't really want anything from her, and I like that it just shows how Alex does really care about Tina and how protective he is of her. A very good scene, I definitely really did appreciate that, and uh, basically Michelle and Brett, you know, there's never been worse, he's kissing Natalie, and... That basically is how we end up until this the series finale. Let's talk about the series finale because the show really get into this very complicated situation. Togetherness was always a very small show. It was. I didn't think it was going to last very long. I didn't think it would last past last season. Why? Because it's a very small show that a lot of people don't watch. Unfortunately, it's, it's unfortunate a lot of people don't watch because I think it's one of the best family shows on TV. It really represents a family, I think, you know, a, a family that and the problems they have um, in the best and most realistic way possible, but obviously an interesting situation with episode 8, because they were told that it's now cancelled, and I was shocked when I found it was cancelled. I was kind of shocked at the same time, I'm like, okay, this kind of makes sense, you know, they've had two seasons, they might not be getting as much reception, I really didn't see a lot of advertisements for togetherness, I saw, like, no advertisements whatsoever for togetherness, I saw all these ones for girls, but not togetherness, and girls has been a good season, I'm not gonna lie, it's been actually pretty good this season, I will be reviewing that next week, but togetherness, I mean, it's just, it's so much, it's it just, it's on another level than girls. It's so much more realistic. It's so much more interesting, and I just enjoy it a lot more. I don't know what it's what about it is, but you know what it is about it. But I just enjoy it a lot more. There's something about it I just love. Um, but because of that, I didn't really know the series finale was going to be. I heard it was satisfying, but at the same time, you know, they didn't know it was going to be the series finale. They shot it like a series finale, which I like. But did it really work as a series finale? I'm going to say this. The series finale probably is my least favorite episode of the season. Mainly not because of the fact that it was a bad episode. It's just, for me, it was a very predictable episode. Everything that happened, I saw coming. Everything that happened, I knew was going to happen. There's really nothing that happened in this episode that really shocked me. And I'm not necessarily upset by that. I understood the show wanted to get in the most satisfying direction possible. But they just didn't do anything that big. They didn't really do anything that fundamentally changed anything. Nothing really that that big happened, but Togetherness was always a very small show. It never was anything that big. It was always kind of just a small show with big scenes, definitely, but it was just about this family, and it really does feel very low-key at times, and... You know, I think this episode really did show what the show really was about. It was about this family and togetherness. This episode represented togetherness better than everything because it's basically forced the four main characters to come back together even if they didn't want to. Because as we know, um, Michelle is really dead set on this whole charter school situation. She wants Alex and Brett to put on their play. Unfortunately, it's terrible. Like, she hates every minute of it. She doesn't want them to do it. She tells them that there's, there's no way this is going to work. And it's terrible. She basically tells them to cut it and... What ends up happening is basically we see uh, Tina also goes to the doctor who basically informs her that she's not pregnant, which is very interesting the way that that was done. Um, we can see that Tina and Alex are getting closer throughout the episode, but basically Michelle and Brett they basically are forced to come back together. They're forced to um, you know get over what's happened, to get over the damage between them, move on from it, and they decide to use Sophie to basically as bait to lure the rest of the children from Anna's side of the school to their to their. Um, school that Michelle wants to build and they do kind of like their own little presentation thing where they get all the kids involved and things like that make their school as interesting as possible and show them about imagination creativity which I really love the way that scene was done I thought that was really great I love that they all really bonded over I thought that was really great and then the ending they do in fact end up getting the school Michelle does get the school which I was very happy about but after this like I said it was just very predictable where we were headed because this really does fix a lot of things between Brett and Michelle for the first time in two scenes it really does seem like these two are back together and they are on the same level fundamentally they understand each other more they're okay with getting back together and they basically do decide that they do want to get back together it seems like they're getting back together um from this and basically you know brett says can i come back home michelle says he always can and that dynamic is back and then alex and tina they start to click at the very end of this episode basically tina is in her costume alex is helping her out they end up having sex and basically that's how the series ends so alex and Tina end up together 
Michelle and Brett end up to back together, and that's kind of how things end. And I understand togetherness, but that's basically the end of this. And honestly, I'm satisfied with the ending. I think it's a good ending overall, but it just didn't do anything that great for me. It didn't do anything that big, but it's not really their fault. Like I said, going in, they didn't know if this was the final episode, so I understood they, you know, closed things out. They didn't try to do anything further, but they did keep things open if in case they did, if and, you know, when they did get renewed for a season three, which obviously there isn't going to be a season three, which really does disappoint me because I am really going to miss this show. I mean, this was a really great family show, um, obviously not for families, but it really did represent this family very well. I love seeing the lives of this family. I really got invested in these characters, and that's something I really enjoyed about this season. I really think they explored some of those dynamics a little bit more than they did last season. Last season was very much Brett and Michelle and then Tia and Alex, and this season was a lot more Brett and Alex and Tina and Michelle, and there was a lot of dynamics they did with that. They also used Sophie a lot more, the little girl who is adorable, definitely, and I love that they used her a lot more. She's a very adorable little girl, and I think that actress, Abby Ryder Forston, she's going to go a lot of places, definitely, and I already heard that Mark Duplass and, um, you know, um, Amanda Peet, they're going to be doing things, so this is not the last we've seen them. Definitely, they're going to be doing other stuff. I mean, the Duplass brothers are constantly working, so I'm, I'm not expecting them to just go away. They're not out of a job. They're always going to be working. They're going to be doing other stuff, and... I'm not, I'm pretty sure together is not going to be the first HBO show we see from them. There's going to be other shows, but like I said, the writing of this show was just spot on. I will admit this season, there were some things that didn't really work, like the school storyline, I never really felt 100% locked in, but mainly because that was just because of how great everything else was. The school story and the charter school never really worked for me as well as it could, but I did really enjoy it. If I had to pick a season, I wouldn't say, I'd probably say, like I said, both seasons I think were very strong. I wouldn't really pick between seasons one and two. I think they were both very strong seasons, obviously different fundamentally, but I really enjoyed um, both of them. I thought they were both very strong. Um, but overall, guys, togetherness is now over, and I am gonna miss it, like I said, I'm surprised that, I, I can't believe that's already over, only eight episodes, which I do like that they stuck to eight episodes this season, because that's what worked last season, and they really did benefit from only having eight episodes, I mean, a lot of shows don't benefit from having such a small amount, but this show really does, because it doesn't have to tell a lot of story, but it does have to tell a story, and it basically stops it from having any filler episodes, which there weren't any this season, last season there was, but this season there really wasn't, and there was an episode like episode six where they just created drama the drama always felt real it felt like it made sense you know we had problems going on within the family brett and michelle had had problems since episode one it made sense why they got back together i don't necessarily buy the relationship between alex and tina just because of everything we saw at the beginning of the season but i guess i understand that alex is protective of her you know he has everything that she wants and that's kind of why they're together i'm fine with that i think it's a good way to close things and especially because it is the closer that's why i'm fine with it if it was moving forward i don't know how i'd really feel about it, but I don't really know what else the show could do. That's the other thing. I think they basically decided to end it as well, because I don't really know what else the show could really do after this season. I think this season pretty much showed everything they could do. I really enjoyed what the show was capable of. I really enjoyed it. I really think this this season showed more of what they were capable of. There were a lot of psychological moments this season, especially with Melanie Linsky. Like I said, Melanie Linsky had this incredible scene in episode one, and all of these act actors and actresses definitely should be nominated or some sort of Emmys, definitely. I think all four of them are very talented. They all did a very good job this season. And what I love is that it's such a small cast. It's only four actors. There's a lot they can do with all four of these characters and put them in different situations. And they use that very well. A lot of characters, you know, a lot of shows nowadays they have all these characters that they need to establish. And this show only has four. And that's what really worked the best in this show is that the dynamics we're only with four characters, and we were able to relate to all of them. We cared about all of them. They developed them further this season. Tina, especially, I think, had a lot more to do this season than she did last year. But overall, guys, I'm not you guys saw it together. And just overall, love to hear your thoughts on the show. I surprisingly love the show. I loved it so much more than I thought I would. I remember when it first came on HBO, I was like, I don't really know if I'm going to like this, but I end up absolutely loving it. I mean, you guys know after episode one, I was locked in, and I just continue to love it. This season, I think, was just as strong as season one. Definitely really did enjoy it. Obviously, I'm sad to see the show go, but I think it did end on a good note overall. Um, pretty predictable, but again, it is the end of the show, and I'm not really upset that the show ended on a predictable note, because I'd rather it end on a predictable note than an unsatisfying note. It did make me satisfied. The ending was definitely a satisfying ending. I think it was a good conclusion for the show. But overall, guys, I'm not you guys saw it together so overall. Love to hear your thoughts on it. What did you think of this season? Which season do you prefer? And we'll see you guys next year, which will be for tonight's episode of Supergirl, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.